Welcome back to Cinema Flex Music Picks. I'm Davey, your host with the most, the beast with the least. The least I can do today is, well, finish off the albums of 2022. Um, for those of you who keep tabs on, well, the tab and communities under uh, the YouTube page, um, I posted um, a few days ago, YouTube have lost a bunch of uploads of mine, which included um, a bunch of 2022 reviews. Um, so, mm, best laid plans. Man plans, Satan laughs. Whatever the saying is. I was going to say God, but you know, it's not very me, is it? So, um, rather than belabor the point, do them again, I thought, well, skip to the end. Let's just finally do the top five of 2022. Um, I don't think we need to be uh, held to account by the calendar. I think we should have time to listen to things that people have recommended um, and uh, and change your mind um, although I didn't funnily enough yeah, these are all the picks that I would have had at the end of the year anyway however I gave due consideration to other people's opinions and then completely dismissed them as is my want but let's carry on or start carry on and start it's always a carry on over here number five for 2022 is the car from the Arctic Monkeys. That's the car. So nice minimalist cover. It's just a car on top of. It looks like a car park, um, but yeah. Um, this to me is wow. Um, it's like Alex has gone back to the the retro moods that he's in when he does uh, the Last Shadow Puppets projects with Miles Kane, who's also featured in this 2022 series, if you want to check out the review of his solo album from this year. But Miles is... is Miles. Alex has gone back to 60s influences and, and more croonery things. Um, there's, there's a lot of, you know, put it this way, you wouldn't get this confused with the debut from 2005 any time. You wouldn't even think it was the same band remotely. So what I like about the Arts of Monkeys, reinvention, while always being adept to what they do, they never do something where I think, no, you shouldn't be trying that. Um, so the car, I mean, pick out a couple of tracks, the opener, there better be a mirror ball. When Alex's voice comes in, don't get emotional, that's not you. It's like, wow, where's this soulful crooner been? This is fantastic. Um, so intricate with the arrangement and there's a, there's a big long orchestral um, introduction there's about a minute long, it's absolutely fantastic um, it's so so different again from even in The Last Shadow Puppets um, he would be still doing a very northern accent he just doesn't have just a classic crooner voice he's not doing his northern version, you know the Sheffield version of um, sculptures of anything goes Sounds kind of like a Hans uh, Zimmer score with the uh, bombs, you know, the bombs that Hans Zimmer has. There's kraut rock elements in it, um, which are, again, very unusual for, for the Art of Monkeys to have in it. It could almost be like one of the Robert Fripp tracks from um, Bowie's kind of Berlin period. Um, body Paint, that's a very Baroque piece. Alex references the song don't let the sun catch you crying um, by Jerry and the Pacemakers. Even Jerry couldn't have sung as well as this. Um, Jamie Cook's brief but fuzzed out wonderful um, guitar solo is just a, a lovely contrast. It's like, oh, there's some rock here as well. They haven't forgotten um, how to do that. And the rest of the track comes in more intensely after that. Um, Big Ideas is really funny because it's a song about writing um, a terrific track and then forgetting it. Uh, under pressure, and how do you, you know, how do you recapture that if you've forgotten it? So it's a song about forgetting a song, which is wonderful because you you just talk about the process of well, well how, how have I lost my wait, what what was that? How did it? You know, so it's very meta, it's very humorous, it's very Alex, very uh, very dry, um, very autobiographical as well when he sings about being um, surrounded and swamped by orchestras when he's surrounded by and swamped by orchestras is it's so brilliant to me alex has never been a more mature writer and a more mature singer and yeah some people are saying this might be the last art to monkey's record 
if it is, what a way to go out, but <sighs> Alex will still keep making amazing stuff, I have zero doubt, he's never let me down in nearly 20 years, and I can't believe I'm saying that, because I've I went to see them on their first tour of the UK and I saw the last Shadow Puppets on their, their first tour and now we're all pushing mid-30s to 40s and it's like, oh, Christ. Anyways, so that was number five, The Car by the Arctic Monkeys. Number four, um, my buddy Dave Kaufman um, guessed this one um, on a long list of uh, things that he thought I might have on my end of the year list. It is... The wonderfully named Dragon New Warm Mountain I Believe in You by Big Thief. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Dave was was um, taking a, a very educated guess because he knows I love my Americana and this is 20 tracks of whack when it comes to Americana. Um, they've, they've always packed their albums, uh, Big Thief, since they started, but eight years ago or so now. Um, but none more so than this. There's 20 tracks. Um, I mean, it's an epic by their standards, even though they're already massively prolific. Um, Adrienne Lenker continues to be one of the best lyricists going. She's got kind of John Prine quality or, or Michael Hurley in that she can, um, she can be very incisive but witty at the same time. Um, just the right side of smart Alec, you know, never crosses over. She can write about the mundane and make it interesting, you know, vape pens are a subject here and things, uh, you know, I mean, even the names of the tracks, I mean, first, Spud Infinity, uh, and the the title track, Dragon New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You, uh, yeah, um, Promises a Pendulum, um, but you know, there's beautiful stuff on this, um, there's some gorgeous stuff, first of all, if you didn't hear guitarist Buck Meek's solo album from 2021, go back, Go back and listen to that. It's brilliant. He's an absolute genius. Um, she's again writes about microwaves, vape pens, <laughs> um, but on this, it's so dense. It's what um, I think Graham Parsons was talking about with that cosmic country sound that he was always shooting for. Because on here, we don't just have, you know, all right, some Americana. So let's have some, I don't know, some. Uh, steel st pedal steel and you know just j the usual kind of country cliches and and you know put it out as that which unfortunately honey harper fell f fell victim to that his sophomore effort was not as good as his debut unfortunately no and here we've got harps and accordions all with buck mix scrawling and electrical guitar all over the top of it absolutely wailing in points um there's stuff on it that sounds like neil young uh, like change and then there's a Dwayne Eddy like twang on on um, uh, time escaping, and then there's fiddle and jaw harp, uh, <laughs> which on Spud Infinity, where we get the great line: "Everybody steps on ants, everybody eats the plants, everybody knows to dance." Um, so yeah, this this is this is Americana 101, but with a very 21st century sensibility. They're not enthralled to. Right, we have to do this as a homespun thing, try and sound very earthy and old timey. No, it's we, we, we know that music, we're influenced by it, but we're also modern people. Um, so big thief at number four. Dragon New Warm Mountain, I believe in you. I believe in you, big thief. You you guys always knock it out of the park. But again, do not sleep on going back to Buck's solo album from twenty twenty one. Number three. Oh, I wanted to put this higher, but there was just two lights more. I'm really sorry. It is, and who guessed this? John. Um, John guessed that this would be on my list. John, uh, forgive the pronunciation, um, Schlossenberg, um, guessed that this would be on my list. And um, I think I did drop a hint actually in my review of Jockstrap's album, saying that that was one of my favourites of the year. I said we might be hearing from Georgia again. Um, and indeed, Georgia Ellery is also in Black Country New Roads, and this is their second album. It came out early last year. Um, and yeah, what a sophomore effort this is. Ultimately, tinged with a lot of sadness because frontman Isaac Woods, um, who wasn't just the frontman singing wise, he wrote all the lyrics, and it was they were all very much focused on his his verbal delivery. 
he left due to uh, issues with depression and anxiety and things. Um, so thoughts with with uh, Isaac and his recovery. I hope he's uh, hope he returns to music. He's far too talented not to do so. But if it does make him feel that way, I hope I hope he just finds happiness even if he doesn't return. Um, but this, I mean, their their debut album was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and it was one of those you won't top that. No, you you might do because especially it was only a year later. You might do another one nearly as good, but you won't top it, come on. You've been touring and you've not had much tech, come on, no, no. They topped it, they topped it. This is better than the debut, it's an absolutely phenomenal record. Um, here you've got Avant Jazz with smartly written guitar pop, there's world music all over it, there's stuff in here that Peter Gabriel will be proud of, there's stuff in here that sounds influenced by, but sometimes better than Arcade Fire, who I think they admitted they were listening to a lot during the lockdown. Um, there's a really cool bluesy track, um, the place where th he inserted the blade, which is, oof, I'll stick that below, I'm going to stick a track from each of these albums on, um, and then Bread Song, so sometimes the title sounds, you know, so fast, so, because Isaac's such a wonderful lyricist that he, again, a bit like a previous album, can make the mundane something rather wonderful. Bread Song does talk about bread in quite a lot of places. But it starts out as this very tender track, and Isaac's got such an emotionally fragile voice, it's heartbreaking in points. And then it ends up not just as an epic, because you know, it's very easy to sound epic if you, you know, especially with the modern synths and things, you can, you know, hit the orchestra button and you're halfway there. No, this sounds mammoth when it hits in, uh, Bread Song. It sounds like um, Host. You know the uh, the Mars destroyer of worlds that kind of it's huge, absolutely massive. It's a great, great track. Um, Chaos Space Marine um, is a three and a half minute tune, which is as close to a kind of pop single as these guys get. They're very esoteric that way. Um, you know, it, it, there's there's fiddle, there's sax, there's piano, there's all sorts on this. They're one of the best bands to emerge from the UK in years. Phenomenal. Um, in fact, let me just. This is first of all the two disc deluxe edition with a live concert. Get this, the live show is amazing. And this is the deluxe edition on ye old vinyl, signed by the band, with um, a kind of negative uh, style done and some exclusive stuff on there. And then they did this last year too, and I've got both the EPs. Whenever they get onto Rough Trades end of the year list, um, they put an EP of covers. Um, so here we are, in Black Country, New Road, Never Again Part Two. Never Again Part One was last year's one. Um, so we've got covers of um, I think a new the New Heart, which is the Magnetic Fields, Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish, who's referenced in this. Isaac, um, gosh, he wishes. Uh, that it can fall in love with a girl with kind of Billie Eilish looks, um, but not Billie Eilish. Um, Us by Regina Spector and So Hot You're Hurting My Feelings by Carolyn Polachek, um, who also has a new album coming out, which I'm very excited about. This is phenomenal. Their one last year was just as good. Um, unfortunately, they're very limited edition and go out of print very fast. Um, that's why you should always be following Rough Trade. People must think I'm sponsored by Rough Trade because half the stuff I talk about, hey, I can't help it. They've been going for nearly 50 years and curating amazing music. I like amazing music. I don't tend to like the bad stuff, you know? Um, so, yeah, Black Country New Road, number three, with a bullet. I mean, just phenomenal stuff. Georgia is taking over the band, it looks like now, and going to be the front person going forward. It was a bit, oh, what, what are they going to do without Isaac? And people, I mean, were already saying, well, they've got a front person in the band already. First of all, a few of them sing, but Georgia literally has her own side project or separate project. They were going first in Jockstrap, and that album was brilliant. She's a wonderful lyricist. And sure enough, the live shows that they put on towards the end of last year, you weren't missing Isaac, did I say? Um, you weren't missing him. And they decided very boldly, all new material. They weren't going to revisit stuff. They'd reference it, but they wouldn't revisit it. They weren't going to have Georgia singing Isaac's words. They were too Isaac, you know. It would be, it wouldn't sit right. Be like Dave Gilmore singing instead Barrett's lines. You know, it just wouldn't quite work. There's, there's a, there's a, a an authorship that that needed to be reserved, um, and kept the 
um, but there's a concert you can see on their official YouTube channel which shows you what the new lineup are like and some of the new material and <laughs> look at what we did together BC and our friends forever <sighs> can't wait to see what they do next number two though um, a band who have never made the top of my list anywhere near really but I've always liked but I just thought you can do more they've done more it is Dawes um, with the misadventures of doom scroller the rather wonderfully named misadventures of doom scroller um, so this is their eighth album um, and far from their post-punk roots they're exploring very long tracks here, very long tracks. Three of them are either nine minutes or nine minutes plus. Um, and there is only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tracks on the record. Um, and it's intentional, uh, very intentional. Um, Taylor, the front man, said that um, they, they wanted to push themselves and see, can we do more than, than what we are? Can we be more than? Um, and yes is the answer. Um, they wanted to know if, could, can we record in one go? Can we record a nine minute track and not mess up in minute eight? That kind of thing. Um, doing it all as live. Very different for them. Um, but although it's epic that way, it's also tight as hell. It's really tight. So they've, again, very different from that early post-punk sound that they had. Um, Steely Dan would be proud of some, some of the stuff on this. It's, it's a kind of palpable blend of, blend of experimental rock, um, philosophically introspective songwriting um, from Taylor, who's brilliant, um, very plain, much more plaintive than some of the other writers, so a bit, bit more smarty pants if you like, but yeah, and his guitar, oh, his little Lindsay Buckingham, the, the second coming of Lindsay Buckingham, um, the track comes in waves, has some of his some of his most lensy like playing. Um, there's um, Ghost in the Machine, which is a brilliant kind of jazz blues track. Sounds like Erlis Dilly Dan. It's so good. I'll state that in the comments. I think um, you know the the first track in the album, even um, someone else's cafe. You know, it's got this great kind of keyboard groove. Do 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 do. Just you just find yourself sitting the whole thing going. Um, and his vocals are nice and laid back. So you can call yourself a living god if rallies up the troops, reinstate the firing squad, laces up your combat boots. Your vitals are stable in your stupid beret, but you're still waiting tables in someone else's cafe. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, it's just so chill and laid back, and then just sweeps into these amazing guitar parts. That you just think, wow, where where are these coming from? Where are these coming from? Um, Ghost in the Machine has one of the most amazing guitar solos of the year from, from Taylor. So, yeah, that's the track I'm going to stick in the comments. All these albums, I'll listen to every, every minute of every one of them. Um, so that's number two. Number one. Number one. <sighs> What's it going to be? What's it going to be? A band celebrating now 30 years as a recording band. Still as good as ever. And I'm seeing them in 10 days time. Suede Auto Fiction. Number one album of the year. Suede Auto Fiction. Um, here is the box set edition, which rather wonderfully does come in an actual box. Um, so <laughs> they released it as a literal box set. Um, this has got um, the, the album itself on vinyl and, and all sorts of cool memorabilia, signed set lists and things. I won't open it up, it's not an unboxing video we're doing here today, um, but b stunning set. Um, Suede, since they reunited in 2010 and started making albums again in 2013 with Blood Sports, have been a bit more baroque, a bit more um, orchestral oriented, a bit more... I don't want to say ever belong because they always had that tendency to them. They always had that that um, that side. Um, but 
they haven't been as strictly pop rock as their earlier stuff was. This is the most rock album they have ever done. Absolutely, with no shadow of a doubt. I don't think it's a coincidence that that's the cover here, and it's so reminiscent of a shot from their debut single, The Drowners. Uh, the video for that with Brett's back. I, I don't think that's a coincidence because it very much is a, I hate this term, but back to basics because it is very much a, we're a rock pop band. You know, very much goes back to that. Um, Ed Buller is back producing. He missed the last album and he was missed on the last album because he is the guy you want to produce Suede. It's an interesting title, Auto Fiction, because Brett, um, Brett Anderson, for those who don't know, you should know, he's one of the great front men of all time. Um, Brett has written two volumes of his memoirs. Um, one covering his life leading up to Swedes, which is fascinating. Um, and one dealing with the Swedes years. Um, and he found that writing lyrics after doing that was quite different. Because he dealt with things that he'd never dealt with before very plainly. He wasn't using metaphor and allegory when writing those books. He was telling the true story. So all of a sudden, things were pouring out of him that he never, he never quite imagined. So this was always going to be a more straight head rock record because that's what was coming out of Brett. It was more straight head stuff. Um, he wasn't wanting to tell other people's stories or be, be, uh, you know, too coy. Um, it was all very, this is me. This is my story. Um, I'm the songwriter, and here's, 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 here's what's been happening um, but at the same time he also said this is a punk record and I'm fucking proud of it and I think you fucking should be it's absolutely brilliant it's absolutely fantastic um, and the UK public responded to it massively it got to number two in the charts their, their highest charting since um, 1999 although all the reunion albums have been top 10 albums Swear are still a big deal in the UK um, I mean there are elements here where you can say oh it sounds a little bit like The Cure from from say the Faith era or um, maybe the the uh, guitar riffs sound a bit pixie like in places or um, the effects and guitar lines are a bit like the church um, or the mission, maybe the cult, but to me it sounds sweet, <laughs> it just sounds sweet to me. Um, you know, personality disorder has that kind of post-punk pitch with a very you know, rough makeover, it's, and it has that disorder that Anderson, you know, writes about, and it's occupying his thoughts, um, very much a post-punk take on the idea of his own personality disorders and his own demons, you know, he's had to exercise them through the, through the books and the music now, which is wonderful. Um, on 15 again, which is, well, if that was a single in the 90s, it would have been top five, no problem, in the middle of Britpop. Fantastic. Richard Oakes plays some of his best guitar stuff on that in the in the last, well, probably since coming up, to be honest. Plays some phenomenal stuff. And that was 97, so it shows you how long ago. 96, even. Um, yeah. I mean, they, they also do the classic Suede ballads, though I don't want to sell this as just being their pure rocker. They do. Suede always have to have a great ballad that'll break your heart. Brett Anderson's the songwriter that makes you want to. Uh, makes you horny and then cry at the same time. <laughs> I've always thought of that. Um, so on this one we get the, it's always the quiet ones, um, turn off your brain and yell, um, and what am I without you, which is kind of his ode to the fans of Suede, who've always been devotees. Suede have a die-hard audience, absolutely die-hard, more than any British band of the so-called Britpop era. They weren't, they were never as Britpop as people made out. Um, the elephant in the room here is the stunning lead-off single, She Still Leads Me On, written about Brett's late mother. Um, oh, he sings it. So, people might remember Brett's voice as being very Bowie-ish, um, if they just think of the 90s stuff, you know, with, um, the, you know, um, uh, with the drowners and with the beautiful ones, you know, that gets louder, you're taking me over, you know, that kind of stuff. The affectations are gone for this. He wants to do it as plainly spoken as possible. So he sings about his mother, and it's it's just his voice. Um, he's not singing it in, a, in an affected style at all. It's just a man singing very raw, very live. They wanted to record it live, um, but 
things fell through. Um, when I think of all the things my mother said, it's like, wow, this is a different Bray Anderson we're getting here. When I think of all the feelings I had from her, oh, in many, many ways, I'm still a young boy waiting for 4 p.m. And then it just, it just amps up a little bit with it. Um, but I loved her with my last breath. Instantly, I'm just almost crying thinking about it. Just oh, and I loved her with a love that was strong as death. And I loved her when she was unkind. And I loved her, I loved her, a dangerous mind. Sometimes when I look up at the sky, she still leads me on. She still leads me on. Oh, fucking hell. Yes. Fucking yes. The minute I heard that was like, this is the best suede record in fucking since coming up, maybe ever, I don't fucking care, it, it's the best one that I needed in 2022, put it that way, and I'm so excited to see it live in a few weeks, well not even a few weeks, 10 days now, fucking yes, so yeah, I'm so delighted that an old favourite has come back, I've loved Suede since coming up a bot on tape in 1996, so I've loved Suede for so I was 11 then, 12, um, so I've loved Suede for, for 27 years, just about, yeah, fuck me, I'm old, um, yeah, I'm just, I don't know what else to say about, about this album, it just, it, it soars, breaks my heart, makes me want to dance, makes me want to jump up and down, which I definitely will be, Although, you go to a Swede concert these days, none of us are as young as we were, and Brett can jump better than most of us, unfortunately, he's kept himself in a lot better shape. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so anyway, um, we've kept it to under half an hour, considering I've done five albums, for me that ain't bad, considering some of these shows I've taken 20 minutes to talk about one record. So, we'll leave it there, so that is my top five of the year too, um, I've put them in different places, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll just read them back. Um, at number one, it was um, Suede's Auto Fiction. Um, at number two, actually, no, they're here. At number two, Dawes with um, Doom Scrawler, The Misadventures of Doom Scrawler. Uh, number three was Black Country New Roads, Ants from Up Here. Um, number four, Big Thief with. Warm Mountain, I Believe in You. No, Dragon New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You. Fuck up. Um, and number five, Arctic Monkeys, The Car. So, yeah. So, thank you very much. Um, I'll still review, like, I've still got loads of 2022 albums um, that YouTube, thank you YouTube, uh, felt up in the uploads. Um, so, I'll still stick up the odd review just as a, I don't want to say filler, I don't want to say content, I don't like that. Just as a, hey, you might like this. Um, and if you don't watch it, you don't watch it. But if you do, bless you. So, listen, thank you very much. Why don't you tell me your favourites for uh, 2022? Stick them in the comments. Tell me why I'm or wrong. And again, I'm going to post a track from each of these five albums. But please, if you even slightly like what you hear on them, investigate the whole albums. Please, 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 please. Oh, thank you. Thank you so very much. Right, this is the bit where I sign off, isn't it? Um, there's no there's no interest in a glib way to do so. So, uh, stay very safe out there. And love and indeed mercy. Hope you're enjoying some of the new album reviews this year. And we'll see what comes up top trumps at the end of this year. I'm hoping Rival Sons is a really good release, but uh, so far it's um, it's uh, well actually I better not say. I don't want to give my show you my hands. I'm a good poker player. Anyway, cheetah bye. <laughs>